Okay, I'm on. Well, that's a start. Hey. Hello, everyone. Bullet Train did not live up to the expectations of some. The film clearly imitates the legendary directors Quentin Tarantino and Guy Ritchie. Tangled stories, a lot of blood, and humor is what the film is built on. In short, a very interesting video is waiting for us, and let's start from the beginning. Before that, subscribe to the channel and write your opinion in the comments. Bullet Train is an action film that would have been more successful as an animated movie, given how often it resembles one. Most of the movie takes place on a train speeding through Japan, but it was filmed primarily on green screen sets. The cityscapes and countryside that the characters experience are mainly miniatures or computer-generated images. The characters in the novel are intentionally more abstract and comic book-like. The majority of the characters are killers for hire or otherwise violent criminals with connections to other criminal organizations. Many of them also have grudges against each other, while others are trying to escape the negative consequences of their past actions. The typical villain in a Tarantino movie has a tragic or sentimental backstory and is either purely malevolent or chatty. In the 30 years since Tarantino emerged on the scene, most of his villains have been chatterboxes who will monologue at anyone who doesn't point a gun at their head and order them to shut up. The tone of his movies mixes winking black comedy and poker-faced pulp. Brad Pitt plays Ladybug, an assassin for hire who is given the task to board a train, stealing a briefcase, and getting off. He's replacing another assassin who became unavailable at the last minute, and against his handler's advice, he refuses to carry a gun because he just got out of anger management and has renounced killing. Ladybug's partner in crime is a bomber crew of murderous outcasts. Joey King is the prince, who seems like an innocent schoolgirl horrified by the cruelty of men, but quickly shows herself to be a smart and merciless machine of destruction. Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson portray brothers who have racked up a high number of kills on their various missions. In their latest job, they must protect a briefcase and escort the depressed 20-something son, Logan Lerman, of a crime boss known as the White Death. The White Death is a Russian who took over a Yakuza family. One of the best surprises of the story is that you don't see his face until near the end. It's more fun for viewers to resist trying to find out who plays him. The Elder is an aging but still deadly assassin who works with the White Death, and the father is the Elder's son. They're both seeking revenge because somebody pushed the Elder's grandson off a department store roof, putting him in a coma. They believe the responsible person is on the train, mingling with all the other death agents. Initially, the plot seems to revolve around the comatose grandson in the metal briefcase. Yet as the script slowly introduces new fighters and explains how they're all connected, Bullet Train develops into an earnest but an imperfect statement on fate, luck, and karma. With Ladybug's constant, and often frustratingly funny, comments on those subjects becoming more like a guidebook to comprehending what the movie is truly getting at, Ladybug has rejected violence like jewels from Pulp Fiction, but he's still caught up in the criminal life which has become more difficult now that he's decided to never use a gun again. Characters are introduced in a way that genre fans will recognize, with typeface on screen followed by a flashback montage. This seems to be influenced by directors like Quentin Tarantino and Guy Ritchie. The fighters go after each other with guns, knives, and their fists. They also use whatever objects they can get their hands on, including the briefcase, which gets a workout as both a defensive weapon and a bludgeon. The dialogue between the characters is often sharp, but doesn't reflect reality. And when one of them dies, the scene can be oddly sentimental because of the cast's skill. But since the rest of the movie is so light and surface level, it's hard to feel any deep emotions. The film is directed by David Leitch, a former stunt coordinator and screen double for Jean-Claude Van Damme. And this film's star, Brad Pitt, and the one-time directing partner of Chad Stileski of the John Wick series. He's become an expert in high-grade acrobatic mayhem, having directed Deadpool 2, Atomic Blonde, and Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone better qualified to oversee this type of production. And it's sometimes a delight seeing Bullet Train lean into its knowingly ridiculous visuals, which occasionally evoke the psychedelia of Speed Racer. Henry and Taylor Johnson's story is successful because of the love between the brothers, expressed even when they're making fun of each other. The performances by the two actors are very relatable to the audience, despite their cockney accents that might not be perfect in a college production of My Fair Lady. The film's highest achievement is that Henry takes his character's constant comparisons of others to Thomas the Tank engine characters and makes you not load the gimmick on general principle. In addition to being surreal, the project has drawn inspiration from a Japanese novel by Kotaro Isaka, source material that contributed to the lead characters also appearing in Japanese. Leech and his team took over the project from Antoine Fuqua, who wanted to make a more serious film. They have recast the story by making it international, starting with Leech's longtime screen partner, Pitt. 
Though they briefly thought about changing the setting to take place in Europe, they ultimately decided to keep it set in Japan. The reason is that Bullet Train is more of a fantasy film rather than one restricted by geography. But the rest feels forced and insincere. Bullet Train is a laugh-out-loud funny movie that will leave you questioning who the real badasses are. The main characters in the film believe they're free agents, but soon realize they're just passengers on a train, unaware of anyone else's desires. The humor that is present throughout the film does not allow for any serious or meaningful moments, thus preventing the viewer from becoming emotionally attached. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time.